Inside the Birds is back. What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff Mosher and Adam Kaplan here for our Inside the Birds middle of the week film review. The Eagles with, uh, I guess you can use the word, escaped Lucas Oil Stadium on Sunday with a 17-16 to win over the Indianapolis Colts. Wasn't exactly the prettiest win. We talked about that on the post-game show with Trey Thomas. However, a win's a win. And Adam, I, th- I still think the biggest thing about winning ugly, right, at least last week, is you look at the landscape now, Eagles are 9-1. and one. The Giants-Cowboys, they got three losses each. So when you look at the grand scheme of things, the Eagles are not only in the driver's seat, but it would take a – I don't want to say a monumental collapse. There's still a lot of games left, but the Eagles are really in the driver's seat here to keep winning games and pulling away in this division. Plus, they have a better schedule than all the other teams, so it kind of lines up. Um, boy, a lot of good stuff we have before the show. A lot uh, we picked up over the last 48 hours, so we look forward to getting to that. Because there's always yeah. more that meets the eye on both sides of the football when you talk to people, watch the tape. and It is amazing how they signed these two guys who were, had not played football since last December, and their factors, particularly – Linval Joseph, I don't know. I, I just don't. I, I there was the, the information we got was so strong. I actually watched the the coaching tape on uh, Tuesday, uh, some some clips, and I was just. I don't know. I guess because he's a savvy veteran, he could come and do this. It's. I don't think people understand how difficult this is to come in. And by the way, he had two surgeries. He talked about it. I guess he let the media know after the game he had two surgeries mm-hmm. in the last year, and one with the shoulder. Just wow. pretty remarkable, but I get he's a true pro to do this at 33 years old and to come in and be a factor. He didn't just play. He was a factor in this first game as an Eagle. Absolutely. We are going to talk about that. And any, all you need to know is it's not just me and, and Adam you know, who are surprised by this. Uh, Jason Avant and Quentin Michael on the most recent Q&A that is already out on our Inside the Birds platforms, their eyes almost fell out of their head <laughs> while they were watching because – and Jason pretty much, you know, stated in our pregame show, it's not that these guys aren't good players, but when you're sitting on the street for 10 weeks and you have no conditioning and you're asked to play for like months. that, you often see them be, yeah, right, for months, yeah. <laughs> you often see these guys either get hurt or just completely lose their their ability to do what they do best after a few snaps, but that didn't happen in this game. So that's a real, real testament to those two guys and smart decisions. And obviously the coaches must have seen that in practice to be able to feel confident to play him and you could call it desperation but they had to at least have some confidence and it paid off for them as those two guys came up really big we'll get into their contributions uh, i want to say big thanks we had a great time on sunday in our pregame show with our patreon subscriber eddie garcia uh he won the opportunity to come check out the pregame show he stayed with us for the watch party uh, at at rivers casino and sportsbook he was very engaging you know took some pictures with jason avant with us and um, smart football guy, always asks good football questions, and we really enjoyed that. So I wanted to give a shout-out to Eddie Garcia and also, you know, tell you this is one of the, the perks that we're trying to add to our, our Patreon subscribers, that you can come see our show, talk to Jason Yvonne, talk to us, talk to Greg Cosell, hang out at a watch party, um, and, and just get to see how ITB looks behind the scenes a little bit. So patreon.com slash inside the birds is how you become a subscriber. It was really cool because after the first series, when we all looked at each other, like you, Eddie, and I, we were like, what in the world just happened with the run defense? This, this can't right. continue. And it didn't, and we'll get into that. But it was yeah, it was really great to see Eddie. And he had a bird's eye view of our new set. Yeah, they put us on a riser, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. That was cool, too. Uh, Eddie did say that he was a big fan, as we've gotten some other people say the same thing, of the interview that we did for our Patreon subscribers with Bear, former Bears head coach Mark Tressman. Uh, it's still up on – well, it'll always be up for the Patreon subscribers. You can always find it. But a lot of great feedback on that, how how candid he was, how introspective he was, uh, just talking about his own coaching career, the direction of the NFL, Jalen Hurts, NFL offenses. I mean, this is a guy who, if you don't know much about Mark Tressman, you might say, ah, he was just some guy who coached the Bears for two years and didn't do a great job, which he talked about. But he was – he's been in the NFL for 25 – years and he was the offensive coordinator going all the way back to Kurt, Bernie Kosar on the Browns and he was with the the 49ers when they had Montana and Rice uh he was on he won a Super Bowl Actually, as Steve an offensive Young, coordinator Steve Young. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry Steve, Steve Young, Steve yeah, Young. Steve Young. Right. in right. fact we're going to talk to Mark about that he and I were texting the other day we're going to mm-hmm. talk about his time with Young which he said it was amazing and Steve Young is a obviously a Hall of Famer but he wasn't always that great when he came into the NFL with the Bucks. Right, uh, but he's got those great stories, and also he coached. I remember you asked him a lot about Rich Gannon, 
Let's not forget mm-hmm. he's coached a lot of guys who can move like Hertz, not quite as <laughs> quite as athletic as Hertz, but Steve Young actually in some ways was more explosive as a runner, more shifty. Mm-hmm. But uh, Rich Gannon was at a different point of his career. It took some great storytelling. And as I think you, you made a great point on our last show about how Mark talked about leadership and how he had to change the way he dealt with people and players were really fascinating. It was very good stuff. All right. So this is a holiday week. We hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. Next time we talk to you, we'll be after Thanksgiving on the Friday podcast. So um, still everything remains the same. We'll still have our pregame show 5 o'clock p.m to 7 p.m. at Rivers Casino and Sportsbook. Me, Adam, uh, Jason Avant, Greg Cosell, and then, of course, the post-game show uh, after the game. We'll be right after the end of the game. Me, Adam, and Trey Thomas. Look forward to doing that. I know Adam did his Discord chat with Patreon subscribers early this week because of, uh, you know, adjusting because of the holiday. Uh, Some really good football games, by the way. I mean, you got Thursday football, Thanksgiving football. You got Eagles, Giants, not Eagles, Giants. You got Cowboys, Giants, which I think is going to be a really good game. The Detroit Lions have won three games in a row right now. So they're all of a sudden looking at their game with the Bills, and that one becomes a little bit more exciting oh than 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 I think would normally be. I mean, if anything, there yeah. should be a lot of points scored, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and how, how about Detroit being back there? So what they did was they played the game. They made a decision on Friday that they were going to fly They were gonna fly on Saturday, play right. the game on Sunday, fly back to Buffalo, and then fly back Wednesday <laughs> to, <laughs> today. To go crazy. back to Detroit, that's the most, that's crazy. But okay, they right. know their their people better. They wanted to be home and in their own environment. And you're right, the the Lions, they've won three in a row. I know people point to this, the teams that they played against, but you know what? Uh, th- they've been so bad, particularly on the road for years. They're probably the worst road team in the NFL the last ten years. They're terrible on the road, but they found a way to win mm-hmm. on the road, and uh, they're exciting. You know, one thing that they're doing which is interesting. The Lions aren't blitzing as much. You remember how crazy they were blitzing starting against the Eagles. Right. And since they came out of the week six by, they've kind of changed it. And credit Dan Campbell. He got together with Aaron Glenn and they made a joint decision that they're not, they're not going to be crazy aggressive and play more coverage. Mm -hmm. And it works. Amazingly enough, it works. That's good. Good adjustment by the Detroit Lions, similar to Eagles kind of adjusting last year uh, at the halfway park. Um, Obviously the Lions looked and said, this is not working. And we can do it differently, and that has paid off for them. Uh, so a good slate of th- Thursday night football there, or Thursday football. And, of course, Vikings-Patriots is uh, – the Patriots somehow have a winning record, even though every time I watch them, they look like one of the uglier teams in the NFL. <laughs> but uh, Vikings coming off that horrendous loss to the Cowboys. So that game looks pretty interesting as well. Let's get into uh, some of the injuries here, Adam, for the Eagles, because there really aren't any additions, thankfully. they That's another big part about winning a game, ugly, and then – coming out of it no new injuries um but the team won't practice for the first time i think until what thursday or no no they'll they'll practice today. wednesday yeah, today. yeah so we'll Wednesday. see well yeah today i'm sorry today yeah wednesday so we'll see if um there's anybody added to the list but you know as far as coming out of it it didn't look uh all that uh you know look good for them yeah in fact there no one reported during the game had an injury i hate the midweek uh pop, injury pop-up where so it sucks for fantasy. Like every once in a while, you weren't aware of an injury and you have to turn your waivers in Tuesday night for most leagues. And then your guy ends up on the injury report. It was never reported during the game. It's the worst feeling in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I, Maddox got hurt. Didn't he get hurt in practice? Wait, I know he's had two injuries this season. Well, I know one of them he got hurt in practice. I thought he got hurt uh, in cover, punt coverage in a game. Yeah. He got, maybe, yeah. yeah, I think it was during the game. Right, but but another one, uh, I think he got hurt in practice. In fact, I think he was – Oh, right, earlier this year, yes. yes right, yes. and those suck because there's not – like for at least the – you mentioned Maddox, there's – at least they have Josiah Scott. We'll get it in him when we go over the defense. But mm-hmm. the good thing about this Eagles team as we get into this is that their depth is the best we've seen since 17. They could withstand some injuries. It doesn't help. We'll get into the Goddard stuff, which was as bad as you thought it would be without him. But the good thing is because they've they've drafted well the last couple of years. You're still seeing a lot of good young players contribute. And the coaches are using the players the right way. I don't want to say they're totally overcoming these issues, but they're staying highly competitive without some really key players. Yes, absolutely. Um, Jordan Davis, he has the ability to come back after this Green Bay game um, for the Titans Week 13 
if he's passed all the, the, the benchmarks that he needs to, if he clears that and, uh, you know, they'll have to open up the 21 day window for him after this Packers game. And then we'll see if he's able to play that game. If not, they have the following week is what their first game against the giants. I think, right. After yep. the Titans. I, yep. It's, it's the Titans at home next Sunday. And then at the giants who, Oh my goodness gracious. They lost uh Wandell Robinson for the season, their slot receiver who had That's his best tough. game. He had a MCL spread, I think, to start the season. And then he comes back. It took him a while to get started. And then he had a breakout game. He tears his ACL late. It's just, it's too bad. They're in, they're in a bad way. As you mentioned, to start this, it's a really good way to set it up for the division. It's like, okay, so Dallas has the, the, the credible and Minnesota had lost all their energy against uh, Buffalo in that comeback. They were down 17. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the Giants now are beat up physically. And Washington, I, look, it's great. Their defense is playing lights out. You guys saw it against the Eagles a couple weeks ago. Eventually, you're going to have to throw the football. The Eagles learned that last year. You can't win this league long term if you don't throw it. Mm-hmm. And hiding the quarterback doesn't work. It, it's good enough to get you to a certain point. But once you get in the playoffs, you got to score points. And, and, the, and the, the Titans found out the hard way uh, when they played the Bengals in the divisional round. They had the number one seed, and they couldn't, they couldn't, they just didn't throw the ball well. Tannehill had a bad game, and, and, uh, and, uh, the, the running back couldn't run the ball well because he's come back from the broken foot, Derrick Henry. Yep. So yep. eventually you're going to get caught. And, and because the Eagles are so aggressive now because they, they trust Hurts in a big way, you, you could always stay in a game if you're going to take some shot plays. And Washington is really not doing that. But the Eagles still, even though they're not thrown as much lately, part of it's because they're getting ball controlled as we set this offense up, they're still, mm-hmm. they're still making plays downfield. And you saw it in this game. All right, right. All right, uh, just real quick on the other IR guys, right? Maddox still has one more game to miss, right? This Packers game, or is it two more? Packers and Titans, I think, for Matt. No, two more, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because he's, he- he's ahead of Jordan Davis, right? He had a- um, no, I thought he was one week behind, behind. Jordan Davis. Okay. Okay. We'll have it all for, for the Friday yeah. podcast. We'll Friday. Obviously, yeah. three more games without Dallas Goddard. So yeah. uh, we'll get into how they adjust without him. Uh, also, big uh, big news that the Eagles have made is that they are debuting the Black Helmets on Sunday Night Football against the the, the Packers. I never get into this stuff. It doesn't bother me. I don't, well, you know, obviously, I think in our position, it's just as reporters, we don't get excited about it. But I know fans do, so we bring it up, and it should be should be interesting to see. It's something You're different. Beautiful. I got to tell you, I, when I was at Panthers training camp, I would happen to see a, a, a mock-up of the Black Helmet that they're wearing. It was so sharp. You know, once in a while, one of these, you see, I have an Eagles helmet to my left. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll probably get maybe a couple other. If, I, I just, I, I like, like for tennis, I wear crazy loud colors. <laughs> I like loud, I like something different. So I think it's cool as hell when they debut them on, uh, when they put, they sent the images to it, to the media. I'm like, these are mm-hmm. super cool. You know, all black uniform with a black helmet. I mean, yeah. Gosh, I, I hell, I mean, again, it, it's just, I don't have any, you know, we're, as you said, we're impartial, but I do like something that looks sharp, and those look super sharp. Yeah, it should be interesting to see. It should, I know I know the fans will really like that. They like different stuff. And, of course, you know, the Kelly Green thing. Yeah, there you go. They'll eventually come back. They'll, they'll get excited about that. All right, um, getting to the tele, tape intel in a second. First, Adam, tell our listeners again what VPN stands for. Virtual Private Network. And how important is a virtual private network? I learned the hard way. The reason why I knew what it was is because I got I got hacked many years ago. Yep. Uh, and I learned to make sure that I use something to protect my computer, or my laptop. I don't use, we you know, I don't use a big computer anymore. The supercomputer. Yep. I use the laptop and also our phones. And I just wanted to make sure I protect myself against anyone who can intrude. Right. And listen, you and I, maybe more so than others, we believe in the importance of online privacy. So we're really proud to be partners with NordVPN. You've heard us talk about NordVPN, which what they essentially do is create an encrypted tunnel for your data. It helps protect your identity information by hiding your IP address. It means you can go online from nearly anywhere safely and securely with that extra layer of protection. I call it like a safety net. Just that little extra layer of protection that makes you feel a lot more secure. Can't have third party spying on you. Neither can your internet service provider know everything that you're doing. 
So, uh, you know, you can also access blocked websites without revealing your identity or location. I know a lot of people travel across uh, overseas nowadays and they're working in different countries and they're trying to get uh, American websites that might be blocked by those countries. Well, if you have NordVPN, you can get those uh, American websites. Um, you know, journalists, people who use public Wi-Fi, gamers, you know, anybody who doesn't want their information stolen or malware uh, injected into their uh, their their computers or devices have to look into NordVPN. All right, you don't want unlawful government sa- surveillance, right? Same thing. So you can be whether you're a gamer, a traveler, a student who doesn't like to use the school Wi-Fi and go somewhere else, a business person who's always out and about. NordVPN helps everyone. So grab your exclusive NordVPN deal, NordVPN deal by going to NordVPN.com/itb to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. All right, let's get into the tape intel. We'll start with the Eagles offense against the defense. So I was, uh, you have this written down because we wanted to talk about it. And this probably surprised me the most out of everything that I saw offensively. Because I did expect, I'm sure you did too, and we talked about it, life without Dallas Goddard would be difficult because it's not just his receiving production. It's not just his blocking. It's how he is sort of the backbone of what they do formationally and foundationally with RPOs. Um, And I thought maybe in his absence, you would see a little bit more, whether it would be motion, jet sweeps, ingenuity with the offense to get a tell from the defense without Mm -hmm. Goddard, who often dictates that tell, but there really wasn't much of that. And that was surprising to me. Yeah, I I was, uh, I asked two people and they said they didn't chart. Uh, they didn't even notice it, that they did mm-hmm. any, if, if at all. So that, that was disappointing, I would say. I, you know, I, I remember when Doug Peterson would not do it in 2020 because we were told that they were playing so many backups, you just couldn't ask them to put more in the player's plate. I get that. But there's re- I don't quite understand it, not having got it. Or maybe, maybe Siriano will be asked about it or Shane Steichen uh, mm-hmm. in the future. But that was kind of weird. Uh, Hurts more good than bad. He made some great timing throws in this game. You know, it's hard to tell off, off TB, but uh, there were some times when he didn't get rid of the football. Some of it is because these guys are just not getting open. And sometimes they did. Sometimes he didn't throw it when he should have, mm-hmm. you know, when the pass target was open. But uh, what you did like is, first of all, they designed a ton of runs for Hurts. He did look more explosive. And I, maybe it's because of the, the, the carpet that they're playing on, the fake turf, the field turf. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He looked really explosive and strong. Uh, here's what happened, though. Well, he would look <laughs> kind of one person said it's like he would. If you're watching me on YouTube, let's say he looked left. He would look in the middle, but it, it's almost like he felt Goddard was still there <laughs> in a way. <laughs> like mm-hmm. he'd scan and wouldn't see it. And then he'd, he'd have to make a decision. He'd run because he would have to because no, there was no one open. This right. is what would happen without a physical pass target like Goddard, who simply, by the way, no one's really covered him either by scheme to scan to scheme him open, or B, he's just too big and strong and fast and explosive. Mm-hmm. And they just don't have that right now. They, they they're gonna they, now the good thing about this, okay, yeah, it it there were some issues in this game, but now they have it on tape. They see what teams are doing. They're gonna have to find a way to scheme Calcaterra open, who's their most explosive guy, tight end. I know Tyron mm-hmm. Jackson had the bad penalty that took away, I think, the play for A.J. Brown. But they're they, they going to have to figure out a way to use these guys. You can't worry about what they – a bad penalty here or a mistake there. they got to play, and you're going to have to figure it out because you can't just be a two-pass target offense with – because Watkins, we'll get into him in a second. That was a great catch for the big, the big score. But they're going to need something. Guys running after the catch – you know, you look at the two weeks, boy, the, the passing numbers are way down and, and Goddard obviously being out is part of it. So one thing that came to mind, and that, that's good nugget of source information there about wide receivers not getting open as much as we've seen them this year, because that's two straight weeks. Because Jason Avant also had mentioned that the Eagles receivers not winning their one-on-one battles as much recently. Now, they're also going up against better cornerback tandems. We talked about Washington's they seem to have their their defense much more settled without William Jackson. St. Juiced has played well at one cornerback spot. Fuller has been a good corner in the league for a while. And then the we we said in the pregame show, we, we really outlined 
Uh, I thought he did a good job of the Colts corner. Stephon Gilmore is an excellent corner. On the other side, they're sort of jockeying uh, Brandon Faison, if I pronounce Faison. that correctly. Faison. Yeah, Faison. Faison. Yeah, sure. yeah, and he played well in that game. Um, there was a there were, He defended the sideline, the boundary, a couple of times pretty well. I, there was one catch that was made, but he was right there. So you wonder, I just, you know, this is something we'll have to watch a little bit going forward because for the first six, seven weeks, Adam, we were used to Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown having their way with defenses. And some of them were good, some of them weren't so good. But I I think, you know, based on what you're saying, based on what Jason Vaughn was saying, you know, I think that, you know, the Eagles coaches probably would like to see their receivers. I, and they're good receivers. No, when, when I'm not saying all of a sudden A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith aren't good, but may have to kind of work a little harder to get open now because – you know, they're on the they're getting the red circle every week. So everybody's trying to play their best game against these guys. And they're going to face some pretty good secondaries coming up with the, the Packers and the Giants. And even Tennessee does a good job on defense. Yeah. In fact, what, what the from, from this is this game Sunday night, we'll talk more about on Friday morning on our previous mm -hmm. show. This is going to be after more of a coach's game because now the tape's out. The Packers saw. They saw exactly what the what the challenges were for the Eagles. And it wasn't like Smith did win. By the way, uh, hang on a second on Smith. S looks super explosive and smooth. Catches the ball catches the ball really well. Now here's a nugget on on AJ Brown. This is really good. Someone gave me. I had not even noticed this, and I mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back and watch this. So on the first catch of the game, on a crosser, he runs a good route against Gilmore. I think Gilmore might have been in, on the zone then. He also covered a man as well. But you see him double catch it. He catches mm. it, he secures it, and then he bobbles it. This takes away run after the catch numbers. He does this. There's no way to know exactly how many times, but occasionally he does this where he bobbles it or mm -hmm. he doesn't secure it right away. And also another thing on Hertz, he needs to occasionally, he does it, he throws it behind the pass target or right at their chest. Mm -hmm. If they're moving forward on a crosser, on a route that has them going forward, throw it outside, make them go get it. He, yeah. He, occasionally he does this when he because that takes away uh, yak yards as well. These right. are just coaching points when they when they watch the tape. I, I just I got this from a couple people, and one in particular is pretty passionate about. It. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna, I, this is good. I'm going to talk about this because this mm -hmm. is inside football stuff. This is why we do the show. And right. you, you you're not going to see. You'll never notice it on TV because you're not looking for it. You're just in a even if you even if you uh, tape the game and you watch it the next day you're not looking for that it's what when people grade tape they say it because they have the ability to see the entire field you can see the way that they're catching the football he he's mm -hmm. a he's got what you would call good hands not great hands aj brown Devonte smith probably has better hands and it's just a couple little little nuggets here i felt we would talk about because now i'm going to look for this when i when i when i watch their tape i want to see how he catches the football because you know, you look at the last two weeks of of the low passing numbers, and I do wonder if they're leaving yards on the field because they're the pass target is either slowing down because the ball isn't in front of them, mm -hmm. or because the thing is, Hertz has been pretty accurate this season, but accuracy is also where did you put the ball? Yes, you might have put it on them. Could you could Evie actually do a little better? Yeah, yeah, that is interesting for a guy who has such great late hands as A.J. Brown has, that he's considered someone with good but not great hands. Because there are some catches that we've talked about from back in training camp and the whole season that are so ridiculously good that you would think you'd have – you have a – it's like you – it's almost like he has selectively amazing hands. He's he, look, he's <laughs> the a higher stud. The, the higher the difficulty, the better yeah. his hands are. But you're right well, in that. I can go back to a couple of passes and usually on crossers that – you're bringing up where he just kind of like, bam, dropped them, right? T.O. used to do that too, by the way. Another, yes, you know, he did. Obviously, a Hall of Fame receiver who would make amazing catches, but had that every once in a while, and it would stick out because of how great you are. He'd drop a pass that was just right there, and you'd be like, how do you not get that one? I, I asked, did I ask Zach Ertz? I asked one of the players back in like 20, Ertz wasn't there, 2013, 12, 13, or 14. I asked one of the players about securing the football. I can't remember whether it's Ertz. It was one of the – it was one of the um, – it's either a tight end or receiver. It wasn't a running back. And the player said, you know, i got to stop trying to run before I have it. And Goddard has that issue. He's had that issue since he was drafted. A lot of players in the NFL have that. It's not just the Eagles. Like, just just secure it first, then go. Or mm -hmm. as you're running, look at – as Harold Carmichael will say, it says it on his Twitter account, 
look the, the ball in. In fact, I talked to Harold about that more than once over the years when I'd run into him at, at, at events. Too many players just trying to make the play and not secure at first. It's okay. You know, you, you, you could run, but you got you, the first thing you have to do is secure it. And that's just something now that I have this information, I'm going to start looking for it. Yeah. Paris Campbell did that, by the way. He had a huge drop in the fourth quarter. There, he sure right? did. When he had yeah. the ball in his hands and he started turning up field. Uh, and you know what? I think he might have had maybe a touchdown if he had turned up the field there because I think he had the, the angle to the, the near corner of the end zone, but the ball never went with him because he was already up the field. By the way, I almost called his game to a T. Remember I said, I said the Eagles would win, but I felt like nobody was going to have great stats. I picked Paris Campbell to be my player of the game because I thought he might a have yeah. a six for 67 type of, of game. And I, I have to go back and look what he wound up having, but it was he something like it. that. It was, you nailed it. Five for 67. I mean, that should have been. Did he? I, I think I said six for 67. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 31. Yeah. He should. He, he, no, because you and I were talking about on the preview, because this is where Josiah Scott is, is, is we'll get to the defense in a minute, but this is where it could be a problem. So that that's, yeah. uh, We'll talk about it in a minute, but it, running back wise, they didn't have the big holes to run through. You notice uh, Scott played a couple more snaps in Gainwell. This is just me reading into this situation. They'll never say this, but you you saw the craziness of him getting that first carry of the game. Was it the yeah. Washington game? Yes, it was the Washington game, and right Scott, after the strip sack. Right, Scott's all yeah, the, the, which was not what you would think after a, a right. sudden change. I, I, Scott's never done anything wrong not to be ahead of Gainwell. I understand the staff, as we've outlined about 50 times since he was drafted, love the Gainwell. But I'm sorry, he's not the player that they drafted yet. He's just not. And I don't know if we'll ever be that guy. Scott's he, 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 He's probably having – maybe he's having a sophomore slump and it's just in his head. But you're right. He's just not – Not yet. And I know he's got some good runs this year. But to be fair, like a lot of those like the parting of the Red Sea type runs up the middle he's had. I mean, the offensive line has been generous to all running backs, but especially him too. I, I just, I, I, but, but it's, that's not, it's not the run. I want to see the explosives in the pass game. Oh, another point. Okay. Before we move on uh, to the offensive line, then, then we'll get to defense. Mm -hmm. Like the, again, we said it leading to the game. They didn't do it at all. Where, where's, where the play, where are the plays? <laughs> I know that hurts only threw the ball 25 times, but Scott had, they tried Scott a little bit, but I want to see more plays. Sanders didn't, Sanders had one, one catch for one mm -hmm. yard. Where are the wheel routes? Where are all the, where are the Texas routes? Where where are the places the running backs? I, this has just annoyed me all season. I I've been unbelievably praiseworthy of staff, but if we could criticize here, which we can, it's our show. Yeah, it bothers me that they don't get the backs involved in the run game. There's really no excuse for it. Yeah, and and especially without Dallas Goddard, now you thought it would yes. be now. I, remember, there there was one really important play that sort of looked like it was a wheel route and wound up helping them on the game winning drive. Is where Miles Sanders is you know, 30 yards yep. downfield by himself and had to be tackled to avoid having a touchdown. But that was really the only time I could remember a running back really having, you know, being targeted or being down the field like that. And that was, a that was a, I mean, the play took forever to develop. But uh, but look, in the course of a game, the natural course of the game, I just don't understand. It's really the only missing link. The staff has done such a good job of scheme and design and we get a lot of compliments when we talk to people around the league when they grade the Eagles tape. Though they, we've probably said this for a year and a half now, and we we got some we got some funny comments about it. But I thought we explained it. In fact, I think Greg right. put up that on our show on our Sunday show. They're very simplistic offense, but they executed so well off of RPOs and and zone read and and other things that they do. They just execute their coach well, and the players take to the coaching really well. But it just to me, you add a a, a element of explosiveness after the catch if you get the running mm -hmm. backs involved in the pass game. No doubt about it. Speaking of explosiveness with the running backs, and by the way, I think it's – so a couple of things. Uh, the Eagles' RPO game definitely wasn't as effective a running game um, as in the past. I think you have to credit the Colts. I thought their backside defense did an excellent job, whether it was the defensive end or a linebacker coming down to keep contained. They, they sort of made uh, Jalen Hurts have to think about whether he wanted a pull – or hand off there because they were very athletic and they defended it well. But there were opportunities for him to hold that ball in the gut a little longer and then pull. And he has the speed to outrace some of those guys. I think he, I think Jalen had run a lot already. Maybe it was in his head of, of you know, I need to get 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 the balls. But there were there were times where the numbers did not favor that the running back run, and he handed it off to the running back anyway. So I'm sure that that's something they'll they'll look at 
on tape this week and say, hey, when we see this kind of box or we see we have the advantage on the outsides, you got to keep the ball and, and keep them honest to the edges. So what they did is they dropped McLeod on the box. Zaire Franklin mm-hmm. was run blitzing. You, you nailed it because they, they really had a beat on what the Eagles were trying to do. Yep. Uh, I know people are killing Sanders for – the, the the pass pro, he just didn't have a good angle on it, and, and Gakwe got him. I mean, you know, it happened. Shouldn't have been in that spot in the first place. Maialata was trying to double team on a three yeah. technique instead of coming back to help. That, that, that can't happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just didn't have a good enough angle. So, But you just described the, 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 the entirety of that play very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Okereke also was a factor in the run game. That's uh, – look at the other stuff here. Uh, that's pretty much it. Their, their their offensive line for the most part was outstanding. They gave them that the big cradles that of as coaches will call it. I call it an oval. It's just it's mm-hmm. like he could scan. Hertz could scan and boy, he delivered some great throws in that game. That's the crazy mm-hmm. thing about the numbers. If you look at the passing numbers, you know, you actually have to watch it. Only 190 yards, but he's pretty accurate. And they gave they gave him plenty of time to throw the football. And they took they tried some shots downfield. I'm interested to see what cha- not changes, but what adjustments they make or what what did they learn from this past game, seeing now life without God? Or what can they do to alleviate this issue? I do believe, and I, I'm not, I don't want to overemphasize this, but I think Cal Katerra could help them because he's the one guy who in, could absolutely move. He's a big time athlete for the position. Right. Just not big right. and physical like Goddard. I get that. But mm-hmm. they've got to find some cross or something over the middle. Heck, run an angle route with the running backs. Try it. Just just you got to try something. Sure. If, if, by the way, if we were, you know, going into the year, if I were to tell you, Miles Sanders would be have a uh, thirteen to fourteen hundred yard rushing year, uh, double digit touchdowns, and average just under five yards per carry, um, which he's doing all right now, but would only have about four or five runs of twenty to thirty yards and nothing longer than thirty five. You'd be like, what? No, <laughs> I, mean, I know. He's t- he's isn't that crazy? Like two I years ago. Get- he had all these 60, 70, 80, and then last year he had like basically nothing. And then this year he's back to like – this is, This year is the Miles Sanders everybody's waiting, wanting for mm-hmm. from a statistical standpoint, but like the long explosive runs just haven't been there as frequently. I got to give Jamal Singleton credit, the running backs coach. It just because co- – the, there's no question that, that he's got has this, something to do with it because Sanders' problem was – Cosell shot down, he was dancing too much. He said that was just completely false by tape study. He said people are making that up. That's funny. Right. We asked Greg a couple times, oh, it's out there. He goes, no, it's not true. Totally not true. No. But he's adjusted his 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 style instead of – it's not dancing. What happens is let's say the place of the A gap. Mm-hmm. He just makes it in his mind. He doesn't like what he sees, and he wants to hit that explosive play to the B gap. Well, sometimes it'll get blown up by the time he gets there. So now he's more decisive. If it's in the A, he hits it. It'll take mm-hmm. that five to seven yards instead of trying to break it for the super long run. So, look, he's done a really good job. There's no doubt. I just wish – because Sanders has been very explosive in the past game. I know his hands were in question, but not mm-hmm. this season. His hands have been – No, good. not this year. Yeah. By the way, I do think he's going to have one game this year where he's, you're going to see a 50-yard run, a 70-yard yeah. run. It's, a, the, the, it's there. It's not like he's less explosive. It's it's going to be there uh-huh. at some point. Uh, I would say Chicago's a possibility. Oh, Green Bay, by the way, Sunday night, this Sunday night. Green Bay uh, does not have very good run defense. They're ha- they they have injury issues, folks. I cannot wait to dig into that game Friday morning. They got issues. We got some good intel on them, but yeah. So that's pretty much in the offense. Uh, there. What about the offense? Real quick, offensive yeah. line. This is I really thought good. The protection really good. was pretty darn good. Yeah. Phenomenal. No, as I said, it was like an oval. It was. It's, it's just. It, oh it, right, right. It, it, it yeah. was like. They just it, they just were really really good. They had they, look. You're never going to play a perfect game, I would say, but it's yeah, and that's a good, good. Colts. That's a good Colts pass rush there. You got you got Gakwe, you've got um, who's the other guy? Oh, uh, Buckner. I mean, you have good, and then they're strong too against the run. They're that's a, another reason mm-hmm. I think the Eagles have trouble running. They're a good, good defense. Quiddy Pay didn't play, so that that obviously helped the Eagles a little bit. But the Eagles got to feel pretty good about this. Uh, to somehow, they're probably going to look at the tape and say we left some plays on the field. Um, um that's mm-hmm. I think that's pretty clear from what we what, from you and I from people we spoke to this, earlier this week, but uh. There's a lot. The, the good thing is it's not, they can't get Goddard back yet, but everything else is pretty much correctable in terms of using personnel, figuring out a way to get more explosives. They'll mm-hmm. do that. I, I, I've, uh, I think you and I pretty much have a high confidence in the staff. The staff has done a phenomenal job, and I'm sure they'll figure it out. Definitely. All right, let's move to defense. Before that, 
We'll tell you about our friends, of course, at Mojo. They are building the sports stock market. It allows you to invest in your favorite players. I tell you what, I don't know anything about Dow Jones. I always thought he was a left guard for the Packers in the 70s. But <laughs> So that, that shows you what I know about NASDAQ. And all those things are confusing to me. But I know NFL football just like you do, Adam. I know quarterbacks and receivers and running backs and tight ends and who's going to have a, a good career and who's probably not going to have a good career. So Mojo allows uh, guys like us and anybody else to turn their sports knowledge into real money by using the sports stock market. Uh, the shares that you buy entitled to you to a guaranteed payout based on career ending stats, which is huge because the careers can be long. You can get guys low now and profit way down later. Uh, but there's no off season and there's no off days. So these prices will rise and fall constantly in real time based on career long projections. So you can build a portfolio. You can buy and sell on your terms every play every game, every season. I love the multiplier that allows you to increase your profits by 5, 10, 15 times as much if you uh, just click that tab. And it's always great to take your portfolio and, and keep building on it. So again, we told you it's over 300 skilled position players across the NFL. Every guy's got a share price that can go up and down based on on-field performance, news, anything else that might happen. So if you think there's an underrated rookie who's a rising star, you got to go long. And you can even go short with a little bit of a stock price uh, as the, as they as they uh, rise and fall. All right, so Mojo is available in New Jersey on iOS or just by downloading the app. You got a chance to win up to $10,000 in free shares of player stock. Click the link in the description box here on the YouTube video or on the podcast for a chance to win up to $10,000 in free shares of player stock. Got to be 21 or older and physically located in New Jersey to trade on Mojo. If you got a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. And speaking of Mojo, Adam, I think we had this discussion uh, on the pregame show. Quez Watkins might be a guy with Dallas Goddard out. You want to buy. He went up 0.87 because he only had two catches. All right, that's not great, but he did have a touchdown. He really should have had touchdowns in two weeks consecutive now. So I'm, I, I tell people a lot of time, I think Quez Watkins, um, Adam, is a player who, you know, because of Devontae Smith and Goddard and A.J. Brown, after four years, he may hit free agency and go to a different team and be like a really good number two shot play, Alan Lazard type uh, receiver. And, make it, and, and because this thing is based on career ending stats, he might go somewhere else and be able to build up his portfolio, which could help you build up yours if you bought stock into him. He'll, next year, he'll be on the last year of his rookie deal. And you're seeing how fast he is. And, and he's become a better route runner. You know, we, we, we had outlined this two years ago, how he needed to grow up a little bit. And he has. Yep. And just one more thing. I'm just I'm just amazed at how this room has been sort of transformed from a bunch of young guys and, and uh D Jax was there a couple years ago to just super type A alpha guys committed to the game, setting the right standard. It's just this is why they're a championship type team. They they're getting it right. And then you got Quez, who's the most explosive guy. In fact, he's probably the most explosive receivers in the league. He's just not the strongest guy in the world, average size. But he's become a better player. This has been a great story of growth with with this guy. To me, he needs to get the ball more because, as you said, look, he, you're looking at two touchdowns potentially. Yeah, Jason Avant agrees with you. He made the same point in Q&A. Uh, and Kenny Gainwell, we talked about him, man. He's down 3.76%. Now, it's hard as a running back. I've noticed this in Mojo to really – unless you have like a monster game, it's hard to really move the, the share price a whole lot. But when you're so you're down three point seven six percent after one carry and zero yards and basically being uninvolved, that's a strong message right there. I would add here. Here's one more you should add. Remember, I gave you guys Kenneth Walker. But someone thanked yes. me on uh, on Twitter for that. I'll give you another uh, guy, Rashad White, uh, coming out of the Bucks. By I'm telling you, his role's going to grow. Get in now on Mojo or Fantasy, but Mojo in this particular case because the stock market, he's right. eventually going to take over this job. And because, as you said, it's for the totality of his career, he's going to be the guy next year. Yeah. I, I, this is a guy I'm buying stock in right now before he, he starts going off. Get it now. Now, your friend, <laughs> your guy, Tutu Atwell. <laughs> this is, and since this is, again, the beauty of Mojo is a lot of yeah. this is based on long term projection. He only <laughs> had one catch, it was a 62 yard <laughs> touchdown, but his share price went up 12. 0.38 percent just on that sell, alone sell 
<laughs> I don't think anybody <laughs> owns them yet. <laughs> don't buy them. No, no. More, did you see Trading Places? Mortimer, Mortimer goes, yeah. sell, sell, sell. Uh, there's John Hansen calls him 3-3. Uh, three, three. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> he, I remember being at Rams camp, and I was like, this guy is so small. Uh -huh. I, 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 it's like with Tavon Austin. The, the, these coaches get enamored with speed, but these smaller guys, man, a receiver? No, uh -huh. I'm not. I'm, I'm not buying with two tools. Two two. Sorry. All right. All right. Uh, last one guy that really sticks out as a faller. I mean, Zach Wilson is obviously down seven point one two percent. Now, this is an example of where off field stuff can. All, I mean, it's performance related, but he may now not be the starter going forward. So he is already down seven point one two percent, and he's going to get benched most likely. So that that's a guy who you clearly are looking at and saying, man. Not right now. Not sell. right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, sell if you have them. If you don't have them, don't be encouraged to buy. Mike but White, maybe yeah. Mike White. Yeah, yeah for yeah, one maybe, game. Maybe go. Right. Yeah. How about Flacco yeah. being the third string quarter? He did not. By the way, he played fairly well before Wilson. I'm a little surprised that they don't want to go to Flacco because they have an opportunity to make the playoffs and he'd be a stabilizing force for them. What, what, yeah. Look, they've they've been a shocker. They've they've had the hardest schedule in the NFL, and they've been, you know they they're six and four right now. The quarterback's been horrendous lately, but right. When the, you know, it's funny. They're not they're they're not hiding them as much as you would think. Like the the commanders are hiding Heineke. They're just not. They they they'll give him you know seven or eight throws he's got to make. The rest is like he only throws when he has to. Whereas some like the Eagles are like we're not hiding Hurts. We're, he's throwing. I mean he's they just the, the last two weeks they've got sort of ball controlled by the other team. Um, but it, it's interesting what's happened with this quarterback position when you don't have a guy that you believe in or a guy that's struggling. He mm -hmm. can bring that on the team, and the problem is you, you and I know this because we've covered this business a long time. Mm -hmm. the, the veterans are, are going to start going to the coach's office and say, hey, get this guy out of here. I want to win, man. I want to get a ring. This guy can't do it. Nice and surprised that anybody could have had watching that game. Um, you know, Not that the Colts' offense is great, but their running game is, and we talked about, uh-oh, running games against the Philadelphia Eagles. And as you mentioned earlier, the, the addition of Linville Joseph, and I don't want to say Sue, I don't want to, you know, discredit him. He played well and, and was in there too. But Linville Joseph, like from the start, was was a, a difference maker, a force multiplier in how he was able to hold blocks off and everything. The funniest thing is, you know, I see one guy was 74, one guy was 77. I'm like, what? What? What kind of numbers are these? These are offensive. These are yeah, but I was thankful for that. They were easier to point out. <laughs> yes, because yes, they were wearing yes, yes. Of course. But I, it, it was annoying. I, I can't. Can you just work numbers for your position? But anyway. I, see, here's the key. Because Joseph was almost in an, every five-man front. I think most of them. Most of the time when he was in, he was in a five-man front. Here's the thing, folks. You couldn't move him off the ball like Cox had been thrown back in other games and, and Hargrave. You didn't see that mm -hmm. with him. That's the biggest thing that you saw. And those college-type holes, which they saw when Taylor went seven for 49 on the first drive, you saw uh, – now, I don't know why the hell – and I, I look, I, I'm always saying throw the football early, but what in the world was was uh, Parks, Frazier thinking on the second drive? Three straight throws? Mm -hmm. There's no way to quantify this, but it sure seemed like that helped them get straightened out because yes. you notice after that, third series on – more or less, they shut him down, and all you want to do is control the, the run game. If you can control the run game, you got a shot, and those holes were shrinking. And honestly, I feel comfortable in saying this based on people we spoke with. Without Joseph, he'd probably run for what would run for one fifty because he 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 moved their line. He also held yeah. up and moved the moved the guards. He, I mean, this guy. he played two gaps the way you're supposed yeah. to play two gaps. He right. he had him in front of him, right, and he could go left. And move the 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 guard or the center to the right, or he could go right and move the guy to the left because he just physically mauled the guy. I was it was really impressive to see. He's a really interesting guy. I love hearing his uh, press conferences. He, he's uh, he's so badly he's almost giddy. He so badly wants to get a title. It's a super cool story. It's but Chris Long had already won one, so it's not compare that that kind of comparison. But it's kind right. of a cool it's kind of cool for a guy who had experienced a championship game against the Eagles five years ago. And here mm -hmm. he is playing for them, and we'll see. He he's actually going to be a key now. Once they get Davis back, either in week thirteen or fourteen, that's mm -hmm. right now the the goal. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. They're so de- like this. All of a sudden, if these guys hold up physically, the older guys, they're like a, got like a six or seven man rotation of just interior uh, uh, tackle D tackles. It's, it's, it's pretty. It's pretty formidable. I would agree with you on. That. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Up, By the way, he know? did. He did win a Super Bowl. He won one earlier in his career with the, with Giants. the Giants. Oh, with the Giants. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Both him and Sue have Super Bowls. So. That I know about Sue. Yeah, he won it two years yeah. ago. In fact, uh, right. he was really good last year. Yeah. People forget I how mean, good he was. I mean, he it, he he got off the ball pretty well. Uh, he's he's obviously going to back up Cox. Although it's interesting because you know Hargrave and Cox both play three, right. and and Hargrave could could play nose, mm-hmm. like he did in Pittsburgh, and they obviously shade him because you don't want him taking anyone head on. And Cox has moved around in this game a little bit, which you liked. And mm-hmm. they just – and then Milt Williams, by the way, he had a really good game. It wasn't just a couple of blow-up plays. He got into the backfield. Oh, you know, he – I don't know what's what's been wrong with him earlier this season, but, boy, he really showed up in this game. First time in a couple of months that he really had a big game. Well, doesn't that really go back to the point we made is that when you – Sign guys like Linville Joseph and, and Damakong Sue. It makes everybody in the defensive room, right, line room, look at each other and say, oh, you know, because now, you know, I mean, especially a guy like Milton Williams, because, you know, Cox, he probably doesn't have to worry about losing too many snaps, but and neither does Javon Hargrave. But a guy like Milton Williams now says, am I the number three defensive tackle or is he the number? Because that guy has been a lot has a, a great career and has a super bowl and is considered one of the best players in his position and i'm milton williams you know i'm just still trying to make a name for myself so it was a natural reaction i think for guys to uh to, to step up a little bit and i and i'm sure you know we were going to talk about it. fletcher cox he got double teamed but he fought it's he he looked a lot more of a fighter um against the colts when he was getting double teamed or when he had to get off blocks than he did against the washington commanders and of course I mean, I think it's fair to speculate that he, a he was probably not happy with himself from the week before, and b you got competition there right over your shoulder. That's what Avon said on our our, uh, our pregame show last week from Rivers. Slap in the face, he said. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought it was a great point. And there you go; they all had energy. It's just you know, you would have to talk to these guys privately to see what they really think. You know, were they were they energized by it? Were you know, competition? May, look, we know as you said, we know who's going to start. But they're going to lose snaps over time. And, and by the way, it's not a bad thing because you want to keep – this is what the the, in 20, the secret sauce of the 2017 team was. Mm-hmm. The great rotation they had and keeping guys fresh. Because if you saw Cox, how many snaps he took, mm-hmm. 70 snaps is ridiculous. Like that, I understand based on the way the game went, they didn't really have anyone else, so he had to play it. Right. And he won't be asked to play. He won't be asked to play as much. Obviously, even if they didn't have these guys, they would figure out a way to not have him play as much. But now there's no yeah. excuse. He doesn't have to play that much. Forty snaps a game to me that would be keep him really fresh. Well, I mean, theoretically, field. they shouldn't have to ever be on the field as a defense for seventy snaps because they should. Right. Of course, that's know, not really, right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, but what I'm saying is because they just didn't. They didn't have anybody else. He kind of had to do mm-hmm. it. He had to. Right. Right. So, no, you're right. right. But go, going forward here, between Hargrave, Sue, mm-hmm. Joseph, Jordan Davis when he comes back, Milton Williams, the, just as interior linemen. I mean, and, and BG, obviously, when they go to four-man front, plays in the play, could play inside like it did in 17 and other years. And mm-hmm. and, uh, and Josh Sweat, Sweaty lines up inside sometimes. So it they got they got something going on here which <laughs> if you would have told me this two weeks ago i'm like where are you saying this or here we go we see it right now <laughs> there it is uh and you can see the impact as we move from the defensive line right to the middle that the keeping the linebackers clean i think mm-hmm. you saw a much better game in general from from team j edwards and kaiser it's like they were allowed to be do what they normally do uh in in, in a game whether it's getting downhill to the run or even some blitzing tj edwards was amazing in this game just amazing in the blowing up run plays. Mm-hmm. Also, when he he's been a good blitzer, as you saw in this game. Kaiser White, you'll you'll see moved around. One of the things we didn't know, I don't I never really saw this in training camp. Maybe you did, but I didn't see him being lined up as an edge rusher. Mm-hmm. It's weird how that I mean it works because you could see that he he does get there. He's not a he's not gonna get a sack probably, but he does they use him because he's got good surety or quickness. So Edwards was phenomenal. Right. You're not gonna see, listen, folks, if you wanted to see Nicobe Dean. You're just not going to see him on the field because T.J. Edwards is not only is he their best linebacker, he's like one of their best defensive players. And the guys, 
like I hope I don't know I'm not saying he's going to make the Pro Bowl, but I hope nationally the reporters who really follow the league. I wish I don't know the guy. I'm just bringing this up because I, I wish he would get more recognition. I I think it's a little bit unfair. He plays in virtual anonymity here because he's a guy that not a lot of people know about. But this guy is sort of like an emerging star that nobody who's like Eagle fans know who he is. But outside mm-hmm. the Eagles, you you would wish like anyone who does advance, like who does it, like if you're if you're a beat reporter is covering the Eagles, let's say it's a Packers writer, you should be writing mm-hmm. about TJ Edwards because you know what he's going to be a factor in this game on Sunday night. Uh, yeah, I remember talking to. Um... Who covers Washington? Uh, John Kine. He comes yeah, yeah. from ESPN.com. And uh, we just always, you know, talk a little bit before the game to say, give each other who's playing well. Yeah. And um, he said, I told him, you know, how Edwards had been playing so well. And Kine's an Ohio State guy, so he pays attention to Big Ten guys too. And he said, you know what? I've really liked that guy. And he remembered the first game uh, the Eagles played against Washington, which was a demolition. And it, it stood out to him that Edwards had played really well, which is important. You do want national media respecting – Guys, because yeah. you know, I've, fans get upset if certain guys aren't Pro Bowl or getting their recognition. But uh, I agree with you. I don't know if like the Chargers writer or the Seahawks writer knows anything about or media uh, knows much about T.J. Edwards. But I do believe within the division now and teams that are seeing him twice, uh, maybe whether it's the Vikings or Packers or something like that, are starting to recognize that he's a pretty good player. By the way, okay, you talk Chargers. If you just graded the tape, like. Uh, I'm not mm-hmm. saying – Kenneth Murray is more talented than Edwards. I'm not debating that. T.J. Edwards has been a better football player the last two years. He just has been. Oh, no doubt. No he, doubt. He, he, which is ridiculous. I was an undrafted free agent. Kenneth Murray, who who uh, Jim Schwartz really wanted. Yes. And you got T.J. Edwards like – this is one, this is one of the most unlikely stories since we started the show five years ago. I, I never saw this. No one did. It's a tribute to the kid. Give him credit. Nick Rollis, the linebackers coach. Mm-hmm. And anyone who's worked with him, this is just an amazing story that I, they're going to have such a – I mean, I don't know what they're going to do next year with, with this group because Kaiser White's been such a good find for them. It's great. As, as we said start the season, folks, we promise you no one will be embarrassed by these guys. I didn't know they'd be a strength, but guess what? They are a strength. Definitely. Um, this, the defensive secondary made some plays. Uh, now, Jason and Quinton pointed out, a few of those plays that either Paris or Pittman caught where they looked like they were wide open that were yeah. similar to last week when McLaurin was wide open. They're having some communication issues in the back mm-hmm. end, and I think it's probably relative to Noah Vontae Maddox being there. Yeah. Uh, and then teams are starting to try to spread them out a little bit. You saw, you saw as you mentioned, Parks Frazier. I don't know what he's thinking, but they went like four wide. They went spread. They're trying to like get their passing game going in some interesting times against the Eagles. But it did put like Gardner Johnson – uh, in some one-on-one slot reps, which you know, not that 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 helps exploit him, as you heard Terry McLaurin say last week. You can't put a safety on me. Um, so they're they're coming up with some ways to try to get at what the Eagles do with their matchup zone, creating some good good opportunities. They'll have to fix that up, but otherwise, uh, what kind of feedback do you get on on the secondary? Yeah, and they isolated uh, Josiah Scott. He he, they got him in that right. game. He, he, that that was big, and they used CJ Gardner Johnson as a run blitzer. Mm-hmm. Epps made some that plays helped. in the box too, but uh, the reason why the Colts didn't win is because R- Matt Ryan can't throw the football. He cannot throw the ball outside the numbers. It's uh, I didn't realize bad. it was this bad. It, Me neither. He, oh my, he's totally like Ben Rosberger lost it over his final two years. They should have benched him. Not I, Mason Rudolph wouldn't have been the answer, I guess. But this is painful. I mean, I, I get it. Sam Ellinger's clearly a, a he's just a, he, he's not ready to play. He's not very good, but I'm telling you, I think Nick Foles is the best quarterback for them. You got yeah. it. I, I, it's where I was He's going. There. You know, it, <laughs> he was inactive. Uh, they're making that. Yeah. I, it's painful. It's a shame. Matt Ryan's lost it. He he's, he can't throw anymore. Quite right. frankly, they probably would have beat the Eagles if, if Ryan could throw. He, I mean, oh my, it, it's like painful. He It's in it his getting like he can't, first of all, he can't move. Nick yeah. can move a little bit and he could, he could, he's got good touchdown field. I'm not yep. saying he's the same player in 17. I get that, mm-hmm. but he's got to be better than Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan can't throw, and it, it's uh, to finish this off, uh, the guy who could throw is coming here Sunday night, but there are a lot of issues with the Packers. Yeah, definitely a lot of issues. But in general, you went to the Indianapolis, uh, had a couple of early issues in run defense, settled them out, had a couple of issues in pass defense, but again, took advantage of the fact that Matt Ryan was the quarterback, and you came out with a 17 
sixteen win. I did I did have a like a minute's thought. Like, can you imagine if they had brought Nick Foles into that game in the second half and what would have happened? Like what <laughs> could Nick Foles have won that game? Well he was on inactive. He should have I know, been. I know. Yeah. That's a good point. He was inactive, so he yeah. could have been in there. But I, yeah. that's a mistake. No. Like I give I Saturday agree. credit. I give Saturday credit going to Ryan because Salinger can't play. Not ready yet. Yep. But geez, I, I think they're only a game out of a wild, the last wild card spot. I, I would go to Nick Foles, but what the hell do I know? I might. Mean, I just it, it couldn't be any worse than Matt Ryan. Yeah, because they got they got good skill position players, but that's it. All right. Well, that is it for inside the birds. On the next one, we'll have Friday. We'll we'll have our early preview of Eagles Florida. Packers before we really go go to town on it on Sunday night in the pregame show. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. Everybody, have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy your Thanksgiving football. Talk to you soon. And, uh, yeah, you too, Adam. Have a great Thanksgiving. And, um, as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the birds. <laughs>